six years of development, over one billion dollars and millions of kilometers traveled. On September 24, 2023, after nearly two years of studying asteroid Bennu in great detail, a Cyrus Rex spacecraft successfully came home to deliver NASA's first asteroid sample. Is there any potential threats this mission pose and how the entire process works? Launched on September 8, 2016, the Origin Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification and Security Regolith Explorer, or a Cyrus Rex spacecraft, traveled to a near Earth asteroid named Bennu after an ancient Egyptian god of creation and collected a sample of rocks and dust from the surface. Bennu was chosen as the target of study because it's a time capsule from the birth of the solar system. Such asteroids are considered primitive, having undergone little geological change from their time of formation. In particular, Bennu was selected because of the abundance of pristine carbonaceous material, a key element in organic molecules necessary for life, as well as representative of matter from before the formation of Earth. A 96 kilometers wide object, which formed during the earliest years of the solar system and split roughly 1 billion years ago to form the asteroid, Bennu was once home to torrents of hot water and the earliest building blocks of life. Organic molecules, such as amino acids, have previously been found in meteorite and comet samples, indicating that some ingredients necessary for life can be naturally synthesized in outer space. After traveling for approximately two years, the spacecraft came in contact with asteroid 101955 Bennu in December 2018 and began 505 days of surface mapping at a distance of approximately 5 kilometers. Results of that mapping were used by the mission team to select the site from which to take a sample of the asteroid surface. Then a close approach, without landing, was carried out to allow extension of a robotic arm to gather the sample. Following the collection of material, over 250 grams, the sample was returned to Earth in a 46kg capsule. It entered Earth's atmosphere at about 44,000 km per hour on September 24, 2023. Infrared cameras tracked its movements as it pushed farther into the atmosphere. The capsule slowed down for landing with the help of parachutes, making a soft touchdown in the Utah desert. Article 9 of the Outer Space Treaty establishes Member states shall avoid their harmful contamination and also adverse changes in the environment of the Earth, resulting from the introduction of extraterrestrial matter. A more detailed policy has been established by the Committee on Space Research, which defines five categories of planetary protection. Sample return mission are Category 5. That said, asteroids fall into Category 5 unrestricted, which means they are not deemed by the scientific community to contain any indigenous life, so no special measures have to be taken. Once the sample capsule touches down, our team will be racing against the clock to recover it and get it to the safety of a temporary clean room," said Mike Moreau, deputy project manager at NASA. The sense of urgency here stems from fear that the sample can get spoiled by earthly contaminants, thereby foiling the entire mission. The capsule landed within a 60 km by 14 km ellipse about 13 minutes after it was released by the spacecraft. Mission teams were monitoring weather, solar activity and space debris. The recovery crews also collected soil and air samples around the capsule's landing area to help identify if any contaminants came in contact with the asteroid sample. A different team of scientists is preparing the investigations that will be conducted on the sample once it's delivered to the lab. Once the sample is received, scientists will unpack it and allocate up to a quarter of it to the mission science team in different parts of the world, while the rest will be distributed among other scientists who are not part of the mission. A sample return mission from a planet like Mars falls into the restricted category 5. Out of an abundance caution, the entry system and its samples would be treated with the highest level of care once on the surface of Earth using techniques applicable to hazardous biological materials. Then, the system would be maintained through a transport to a dedicated Mars sample receiving facility. Such a facility would have design and sample handling requirements equivalent to those of biological safety laboratories used for research studies of infectious diseases, Biosafety Level 4 laboratories. Therefore, returning asteroid sample to Earth 
does not pose much of a threat, especially since it has already been done before.